It's always exciting when a session starts on Atlantis. You're never quite sure who's going to arrive, how they'll arrive, or quite where they'll drop in. You'll see new faces and meet old friends. And once everyone has settled down, it all begins. The main idea for tonight uh, is uh, that we're talking about vocabulary. This line from Confucius, when you see it, and I don't mean necessarily spelling only, but see how it functions in context, then it's much easier to remember. And when you do something with it, like um, some kind of task or, uh, or use it in, in your own speech or language production, then and only then do you understand how it really functions in the language. It's, hello, ya. And so this is exactly what I was trying to do with Slinky. You, you just had it in text chat from Goldwald, uh, Slippery, Slinky, Sleek. I still don't, uh, don't really understand how to use uh, this word slinky, how to apply it to new and exciting things. When we, uh, when I he hear a word, uh, it's always connected to, to sound. And we have a similar word in Swedish, slinko. Uh, and it has its meaning. It's a noun and it's also a verb. And when I hear the same sound in a, another language, uh, I compare those. And if you look at the page, the page Lynn posted, uh, uh, this girl is wearing a slinky low-cut dress to seduce the onlookers to drink uh, low diet Pepsi. So it supports my my feelings about this word. But could it not only mean attracted uh, that people get attracted on some stuff and I know for example people are getting different attracted so uh, for me this is not only um, yeah, I'm looking on the yeah what the word is meaning for me this is not only a sexual meaning then for führen uh, could be a treasure could be a don't know but it had not to be only sexual meaning Well, it is interesting because Wiktionary, uh, as, as you can see uh, here, um, does not emphasize the sexual side of slinky. It says furtive, stealthy, or cat-like, which need not necessarily be sexual. But, uh, but Macmillan and, and Oxford, certainly among the best dictionaries uh, of English, uh, they both have sexual somewhere that seductive sexual, which uh, could open up a, an interesting uh, thread here, of course, about how, um, should we say, taboo words, or maybe swear words, are used by uh, foreign learners in English, um, used and abused, uh, things like, you know, foreign learners seldom have uh, the, the feeling for the strength and the social sense of taboo words, and apparently they, they tend to use them quite freely sometimes where they should not. So that would be an interesting thread if you want to follow it. But maybe other people have other words and other vocabulary stories to share. Well, when I would go to America, I wouldn't use swear words, I would only use uh, proper words to avoid misunderstandings. 
Yeah, I think in some areas in America it could be really dangerous to use these words then. Well, unless uh, we feel so confident that we think we can talk ourselves out of the tra trouble. I think uh, I think it's okay to to have this opportunity to children th that they can use these swear words, but I think as an adult or parent, you have to tell them where to use them. <laughs> you know, try to teach the way and the context where where they can use them. Uh, so we. We should say, learning is good. It's good you have learned this bad word, but don't use it in this context when a granny is here, because then she's not gonna buy you any ice cream. And that's what it's all about, really. Sharing, cooperating, communicating, and getting the support you need to develop your language skills. This was a brief view of one activity in Vatlantis. The whole session lasted for over an hour, and we'd like to thank Vlodek and all the students for allowing us to sit in and record it. It was great fun, and covered a range of vocabulary and answered many questions. And there's a lot more to do and see here, but the best way is to experience it. So come in world and visit.